Now, a lot of people equate the waterproofing to a brand or to a particular company without really understanding the type of waterproofing. I think this current uh, series of waterproofing videos, we will try to cover why this problem has become so acute today. I hope that we can cover this whole wide range of uh, issues in this range of videos. Interfloor leak is actually a uh, water leaks that occur between two parcels of property uh, and it's defined in the Strata Management Act. One of the most misunderstood areas of root causes is actually the condition of the concrete slab, where the concrete slab itself has got honeycombing or it has cracks. And as a result of that, whatever waterproofing that is applied on top of this defective concrete slab will not solve the issues. Obviously, the other areas that can cause interfloor leaks would be pipe penetrations because when you are in the bathroom or in the flat slabs, you have a lot of penetrations. Another area, of course, would be the waterproofing itself. There's so many types of waterproofing in the market, it's really confusing. In addition, when you move into a bathroom to a unit, you may find that you don't like the towels and you start removing the towels or you may move the bathrooms around and as a result of that, you accidentally cause damage to the waterproofing. Commonly, we can begin to address the issues of root causes from design, you know, uh, as far as design of the concrete itself and also the waterproofing systems. And more importantly, having done all the design and specifications, it's the workmanship. Now, over and above all of this, of course, is to ensure that when you finally hand over, you've got the proper waterproofing warranties and the proper tests and so forth that comes along with it. it will immediately affect the indoor air quality. And sometimes the water leak may also occur from sewer pipe and you know, through piping in the bathrooms and you're talking about grey water. However, we should also be concerned about long-term leaks if, if they are not addressed. Because as you know, we have steel bars that are inside the concrete slab and these steel bars may rust over time. And when it rusts, it creates a spalling effect and you start getting pieces of concrete falling off. Now, we tend to see this a lot in many concrete slabs today. You can basically see little needles and little pins and you can see the evidence of people doing PU grouting. But from our experience, we can see that this method of repair of actually injecting a PU grouting from the bottom of the concrete slab, it's often a temporary fix. The repairs seem to work for a short time but after time you can see that the water leaks will start again sometimes not at the area where they carried the repair but slightly adjacent to it and we all know that the most effective way of carrying out uh, repairs of waterproofing of interfloor leaks is to actually carry out the repair from the positive side not the negative side and this positive side repair is often avoided because it's more costly it's more messy it's disruptive to the person above under certain circumstances, very narrow circumstances that the repairs can be carried out from the bottom if access is not available from the top. Areas for leaks in common property are often found in planter boxes, gardens, swimming pools, fish ponds and also concrete flat roofs. Sometimes you also have gutters and channels or, or scupper drains. The interfloor leaks that occur in these areas are in fact primarily very similar in root causes to leaks that are found in the bathrooms that we discussed earlier. And the methods of repair is essentially the same. You cannot try to do isolated repairs, especially when you have water tanks or even uh, a swimming pool, because those have positive pressure and the pressure from the water is even greater than just in the bathroom where it is just a shower water, it's right on the surface. One of the fundamental attributes to have good waterproofing or to prevent interfloor leaks is to make sure that the concrete itself is done right. There are many, many types of uh, waterproofing specifications out there in the market. And if you were to specify a certain waterproofing for a bathroom, 
it would be quite different if you were to specify the waterproofing for a swimming pool or a water tank for that matter. One of the most important considerations is the property of the waterproofing itself. Now for one to understand that when the waterproofing is applied onto a concrete slab, two main properties come into mind. One is its ability to stretch, another one is its ability to not tear when it is being stretched. So in a way, the waterproofing itself has to perform a dual function. Not only that it has to be tough, but it has also be able to be stretchable. As we know, when you can stretch, it means that as the concrete has got cracks or movement, the waterproofing will stay intact. And we hope that uh, through these videos, we can uh, visit sites that occurred uh, issues. Then we can perhaps also cover some of the good practices and some of the pitfalls about what uh, the waterproofing can do or the, what the waterproofing cannot do in under circum circumstances.